Hello and welcome to Code a Song. I'm your host, Cadence Patrick, and I'm coming to you from Black Girls Code headquarters. Today, we're gonna have so much fun making beats together using the Python programming language. This is the second video in our Code a Song series. In our first video, we walked through the basics of how to use EarSketch software, and we coded our first song. In today's video, we're gonna dive deeper into EarSketch and focus on making beats. We'll be going through four levels in today's session. In level one, we'll be learning about the make beat function. In level two, we'll learn about assigning variables. Level three is all about beat strings. And in level four, we'll get to try out some advanced beat techniques. But before we start making beats, we gotta know what a beat actually is. In music, a beat is a basic unit of time. So kind of like how there are seconds on a clock, beats make up the steady pulse of a song. Here, I'll give you an example. You've probably heard this beat before. Get it? We can make beats like this by coding an ear sketch. I know it looks a little complicated at first, but once you start playing around with it, it's actually really fun and creative. So let's get started and code our own beats. Go to earsketch.gotech.edu and click Start Coding. Start a new script by going to the Content Manager on the left. Click the Scripts tab, then click the plus sign for a new script. You can name it whatever you want. I'm gonna call mine Sick Beats because my beats are gonna be sick. Find a blank line in between the set tempo and finish functions, like line number 13. Now we're gonna write some code. Let's start with level one of making beats, the make beat function. Go to the code editor. Type make beat, open parenthesis, onto line 13. Make beat is a function. If you remember from my first episode, functions are commands with a name, and they tell the computer what to do. Function names are followed by open parentheses, and inside are arguments separated by commas that provide specific information the function uses to do its job. The makebeat function has four arguments, sound, track, measure, and beat string. The first argument is the sound clip you're using to make the beat out of. Your sketch has thousands of sounds to choose from. If you remember from our first episode, they're all located in the content manager on the left-hand side. Okay, so I have no idea how I want my beat to sound just yet, so I'm gonna listen to some different options. Let's click on artists to see if there's anybody that looks good. Ooh, I love Alicia Keys. Let's check out what she's got on here. Alicia's got a few different options here. I'm gonna try this one called Underdog Vocals by clicking on the green play button. Whoa, that was powerful. Sorry, Alicia, but I'm thinking I want something more instrumental for my beat, so I'm gonna keep looking. Let's try clicking on instruments to see some more options. All right, all right, see we got bass, drums, flute, keyboards. Let's go ahead and click on drums. Fun fact, I used to play the drums when I was a kid. Let's try the very first one, Sierra Melon Beat, by clicking the green play button. All right, that was really good. First, I'm gonna give it a star so it's easy for me to find again later. And next, I'm gonna try it out for my first beat. Just click on the clipboard icon and it will automatically put the sound into the make beat function. Then let's type in a comma after it. Boom. We've just coded our first argument, people. All right, one argument down, three to go. The second argument is the track number to play the clip on. Let's go ahead and type one for track number one and put a comma after it. If we wanted to layer more sounds on later, we can type two for track number two, three for track number three, and so on. You can see all of these different tracks numbered in the DAW. For example, in our We Will Code You beat, the pounds are on track two, and the claps are on track one. Let's stick with just track one for now and move on to our next step. It's time for argument number three, which is measure. In music, a measure is a unit of time that holds a specific number of beats. You could have multiple beats inside a measure and multiple measures inside a song. If you look at the DAW, you can see up top, there's a progress bar that tracks the beats and measures of your song in seconds. In our We Will Code You beat, you can see that the beats from the fist pounds on track two start immediately at measure one, whereas the hand claps on track one start later. So let's keep it simple and start our new beat at measure one by typing one and then a comma afterward into our make beat function. Voila! Our third argument is complete and there's just one left to go. The fourth argument of our make beat function is the beat string. It's like a secret code that tells EarSketch how to play the sound as a beat. Let's take a look at an example of a beat string. 
Okay, now I know you're probably looking at this thinking like, ah, this looks so complicated. What are all these zeros and dashes? But it's actually pretty simple. Like a secret code, every time you see a zero, it tells the makebeat function to start playing the sound clip from the beginning. So when you see a zero, it's like it's time to tap the drum. The minus sign is like a secret code that means silence. So every time you see a minus sign or multiple minus signs in a row, you'll have silence until the next zero comes along. Notice the quotation marks around the beat string? They help the computer recognize when the beat string starts and stops. So this beat string of zeros and minus signs is actually the beat for the fifth pounds of our We Will Code You song. Take a listen. Okay, so now that we get the basic idea of a beat string, let's go back to our make beat function and play around. I'm just gonna go ahead and type in some random zeros and minus signs, just to try something and see how it sounds. Finally, end your beat string with another quotation mark and end the function call with a closing parenthesis. Now, click the green run button, wait for it to load in the DAW, and click the green play button. And that's it, we did it. We made our first beat, high five. So let's review real quick how we made our beat. Using the make beat function, we defined four arguments. The sound you wanna play, the track number to put it at, the measure to start at, and the beat string describing the beat pattern. We just completed level one of our lesson on making beats, and I'm gonna celebrate by eating my favorite snack, beat chips. Get it? And now it's time for level two of making beats, assigning variables. Okay, so I'm about to show you a pretty cool trick that makes experimenting with different beats even easier. Let's say you wanna play around and try different stuff with your beats. You might want a different sound clip or a different beat string. But if you look at the make beat function we just made, let's be honest, it's kind of long and hard to make tweaks to. That is, unless we turn our sound clips and beat strings into variables. Let's start with the sound clip. Sierra underscore melanin underscore drumbeat underscore one. Doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. So let's make it into a variable called sound. Here, I'll show you how. Go to the code editor and type sound equals Sierra melanin drumbeat one. So sound is our variable. And when we type the equals, that means we're assigning it. This is like giving our variable a homework assignment. And the homework assignment is to point to a value. Here we're using the value Sierra Melon and Jumpbeat1. Now let's make another variable for our super long beat string. Let's call it beat1. Go to your code editor and type beat1 equals, and then type in your beat string with quotations around it. Zero dash 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 zero dash 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 zero dash dash zero. You get the point. So basically, what we've just done is made two shortcuts. Now we can rewrite our make beat function and have it be so much simpler using variables. Watch this. Type make beat, open parenthesis, sound, comma one, comma one, comma beat one, close parenthesis. This new make beat function makes the same exact beat that we had before. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the old one. Now I'll run and hit play on the new one. See, it's the same beat. Why don't you try it? Make a new script with two variables, sound and beat one, and see if you can use the variables in a make beat function. Variables are actually a fundamental part of computer science. I use them all the time and they make my code so much shorter and easier to read. Let's add another variable called beat two underneath beat one. First, you assign the variable with the equal sign. Then you create a value for beat two. This will be whatever beat string you want to invent. Okay, I'm just gonna play around with a different combination of zeros and minus signs. You can get creative and do whatever you want. Just remember to put quotations around it. Now, what do I need to change in order to play the new beat, beat two? What line should I change? I need to change the last line so that the make beat function has beat two as the last argument. So let's go ahead and delete beat one and type in beat two instead. Let's run it and play it. Not bad, that was pretty good actually. Now I can switch between beat one and beat two just by changing one little number when I use the variable. Okay, I think it's safe to say we've officially crushed level two. Let's go ahead and treat ourselves with a little celebration. Let's happy dance. Now it's time to move on to level three of making beats, beat strings. So far, we've been using zero and minus sign characters in our beat strings. What's a character you ask? Well, numbers, letters, symbols, these are all different kinds of characters. When you put them together between quotation marks, you make a string. 
there's another character we can use in our beat strings that makes things sound interesting. That's the plus sign. First, you put a zero, then you can put a plus sign after to keep playing the sound. If you put a lot of pluses, then you play more of the sound clip. Let's try it out. We use our same Sierra Melanin drum beat one for the sound variable. And let's make a new beat one, where it starts with a zero and then has a bunch of plus signs after it. Run it and hit play. See, now you can hear way more of the original Sierra track. Let's play around some more. Remember that zero means to restart the sound clip. Now you can mix your zeros and pluses to make some interesting beats. Let's try this out by making a beat three and assigning it to a new beat string, something like this. Remember to always put quotation marks around your beat strings and to replace the fourth argument in the make beat function with beat three so we can hear what we just made. Let's run it, play it, and listen. Hmm, very interesting. Could use some work. Keep playing around and try tweaking your beats or making more beats. You can even add some silences with the minus sign. Just remember, if you want to use a plus, it has to be connected to a zero. See in the yes example, there's a zero in front of the plus sign. In the no example, the zero is missing and ear sketch will not play that part correctly. So remember to write your strings with a zero plus. Go ahead and test out using the plus character in your beat string. Notice how it sounds different? You might be wondering, why do we have all these rules about whether the plus sign has to have a zero in front of it or not? This is called syntax. It's basically a list of rules that make up a language. In Python, you have to follow very specific syntax rules or your code won't work. Let's make another beat. You know how beat strings are made up of different characters? Well, it turns out that you can make a good groove in your sketch if you keep your beat strings down to 16 characters. If you use exactly 16 characters, it fits one measure perfectly, and we can loop that measure over and over together with other parts of your song. Let's give it a try together. Make a new beat string and count out 16 characters to make sure we have the magic number. Now, let's swap out for a new sound to keep things interesting. This time, I want to try Khalid Norm drum beat. Let's swap that out with Sierra. And let's make sure our make beat function is using our new beat four as its fourth argument by typing that in right now. Okay, let's click run. Take a look at the dot. See how the colored box lines up with the end of the measure? That's how we can double check that we have 16 characters in our beat string. Let's hear how this beat sounds when it's looped. Looped just means playing it over and over again. Click the loop button on the top right hand side of the DAW and press play. I really like how this sounds so far. Okay, people, we're cruising right along here and we've just completed level three. Yay for us. Go get yourself a snack. I'll wait. Now it's time for our final challenge, level four, advanced beat techniques. In this section, I'm gonna share with you a more advanced beat I've made and show you how I made it so that you can make your own. Okay, so what I'm about to show you is a more complex beat I made that I decided to call spicy beat. Let's go over to the content manager, click on scripts and type in spicy beat to try and find it. And here it is. I'm gonna click on it to open it up in a new tab. Let's take a look at this code. So right away, you'll probably notice I created some new variables called bongo and a symbol. Bongo is a new variable that I created that was inspired by this sound clip I really liked. So I typed in bongo, and then I typed an equal sign to assign it to that sound clip. I did the same thing with symbol. Next, you can see I have two beat strings with 16 characters each. You can just play around until you get some pulses that you like. Last, you see I created not one, but two make beat functions. Yes, you can do that. The first make beat function calls the bongo to play beat one, and the second make beat function calls the symbol to play beat two. Also, notice that the bongo is on track one and the symbol's on track two. Now, check out the beat string for beat two. Look at where the zeros are. See, they're in between the zeros of beat one. Can you imagine? What will that look like in the DAW? And what will that sound like? Let's find out. I'm gonna click run, and then go check out what it looks like in the DAW. See, there's now two tracks. You can see the symbol playing in between the bongos. Let's listen. I'll loop it. I kind of like this one. This is going really well so far. Okay, well now that you know so much about making beats, let's test out our new knowledge with a little segment I like to call 
challenge time! I'm going to give you three challenge questions and you can press pause at any time during the countdown if you need more time to think. Here we go. Challenge question number one. Take a look at this code. If you want to make a beat with the Sierra sound clip, what do you type instead of the question marks? Is it A, Sierra, B, Bongo, or C, sound? Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. It's C, sound. Sound is a variable that points to the Sierra sound clip. Moving on. Challenge question number two. There's something wrong with this beat string. Your sketch won't play it correctly. What needs to change? Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. The problem is this beat string has a plus sign right after a minus sign, which is not gonna work. Remember, a zero means to start playing the sound clip. A minus sign means to stay silent. And a plus sign means to continue a sound clip. When the plus sign comes after a minus sign, it doesn't have any sound to continue playing because the minus sign is silent. So in order to fix this code, we need to put a zero in between the minus sign and the plus sign. Now it's time for our final challenge, question number three. This one is tricky, so look closely at the make beat functions in this code. When I click run, your sketch gives a warning that there are overlapping clips on track one. What does this mean and how do you fix it? Five, four, three, two, one. And the answer is, there's a problem with the second make beat call. We put it on the same track and measure as the first make beat. Instead, we should put it on its own track, track two. Great job trying out the three challenges. And with that, we've now completed level four. Woohoo! Give yourself a round of applause. You earned it. You're totally ready to code your own beats. Remember everyone, syntax is really important. In the next tutorial, I'll show you how to use your new beats in a song. Until then, keep practicing your new skills and thank you so much for coding along with me.